let's carry on from where we left off. So if that child is experiencing that kind of bullying, then it means that he or she is going through a very traumatic times. And if he or she is not able to tell a parent or to tell a teacher or to tell a friend, at least to talk to somebody, the person is going to develop some kind of anxiety disorder if help is not gotten from anywhere. So as we're saying that if the teacher is also part of the problem, then it becomes worse. That most of the times catapults the anxiety into another level, which becomes clinical. So um, bullying from classmate or even the teacher, they could also be stressed from the workload they are given because workload stresses adults and at the same time stresses young kids. Because even if you go to work, even the doctors, some of them have got higher workloads, which is very stressful. And if you don't take care, it's going to have a toll on your health. So imagine a young kid who has been overloaded with homework, who has been overloaded with mathematics or maths work, who has been overloaded, uh, overloaded with history work, who, who has been overloaded with science, and is not get, getting the help that he or she is supposed to, to get. Obviously, stress and anxiety is going to kick in. And if that person hasn't got the right connection or the right contacts or the right communicators to air their concerns, to air their problems, to air their stress and anxieties, it becomes very difficult for them to carry on in life. And if that goes on without a check, if that persists, if that becomes excessive, if that becomes very stressful in a period of time, it becomes clinical. And that is when we term it as a disorder. So let's carry on. So school phobia may also be a form of social phobia, also known as social anxiety disorder, as we already touched base on the previous um, episodes. Social anxiety disorders, there are so many people out there that wouldn't want to go into public or that wouldn't want to go into community to meet so many people. Claustrophobia, claustrophobic. They don't want to hang out with a lot of people. They don't want to go in crowd, into a crowd. So school phobia can also be termed as a social anxiety. It becomes a disorder when it gets worse. That one is a fact. But most of the kids have got the school phobia. But when school reopens, they bought that, they, 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 you know, they work through that for themselves and then it fades away. But when an individual can't overcome that stress and that anxiety, it develops into a disorder. So children with this disorder may avoid speaking in front of their classmate or meeting new people. So they shy away from communication, from even going out to play when it's break time. On even when it's lunch time, some of them even forced to bring their own packed pack lunch from home because they don't want to go in and sit there with the crowd or with the rest of the students. They have that social anxiety. They don't want to mingle. They don't want to go in and sit down with the rest of the students or with the rest of the peoples. They have that disorder. It's not a disorder, sorry. It's an anxiety. We, every individual has got some kind of a level of it, sorry, some kind of a limit, which is not clinical yet, but they go through that every day in their lives. But it becomes a disorder, it becomes clinical when it's uncontrollable, when it's excessive, when it's very, um, you know, persistent. So typically, 
Social phobia in children is caused by some traumatic event, such as knowing an answer when called on in class. You see, where are we going? So most of these things I'm pleading with the teachers out there that please, if you don't know these things, there is no harm or there is no nothing to worry about. But try and research a little bit on these things. Try get some of these videos out there, listen to them, and then pick a few pointers to help your students or your pupils in class. Because if you don't do that, your class pupils, it, some of them will later develop anxiety disorder in their later adult lives. And if you were able to assist them when they were in your class, maybe they wouldn't have been suffering, those of the adults that have gone through that without any support and are suffering from anxiety disorders when they are, you know, when they are adults, maybe they wouldn't have gone through that if the teachers were able to uh, pick on that and support them and give them the actual help that they need and maybe refer them to their GPs and maybe spoken to their parents, they wouldn't have been going through that. So please, teachers out there, try and pick on these things. Talk to your pupils, you know, give them the direction that they need, communicate with them effectively, let them understand what they are going through understand them from the point that they are trying to establish and then give them the relevant help that they need, please. Like adults, children may suffer from generalized anxiety disorder as we've already discussed or obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD, as we've already discussed. You know, all these anxieties come into play when a person experiences or the person exhibits one trait. If the person exhibits one trait, there might be or there can be a possibility of that individual adding more categories to what he or she already have or has or had. So please, these anxiety disorders are intertwined. They come in a package form. And one can experience a childhood disorder and later on in life, go on to experience generalized anxiety disorder with a mixture of obsessive compulsive disorder. So teachers, I'm pleading with you because you are the flashpoints of our kids. You are able to pick on because they spend a lot of time at school even more than at home because it's weekend when they come home they've got less time to hang around before they go back to sleep and then wake up in the morning and go back to school so we only have them during the weekend and then evening times whereby they are tired and can't even process anything you ask or tell them so i'm pleading with the teachers out there that please try and familiarize yourself with all these uh, anxiety disorders so that you can be able to pick or pinpoint some kind of a stressor or some kind of a factor or determinant that will really give you the room to assess and evaluate that individual or that child in your care. So, Let's carry on. The symptoms of both disorders are the same in children as they are in adults, as I earlier explained. If a child has a generalized anxiety disorder, in short, in abbreviation is GAD, they may worry about anything, even if it is seemingly minor. So that is quite worrying when they go to that level of generalized anxiety disorder and start worrying about 
anything, then it becomes...